in order to you know do creative projects or things that might require more resources than what's immediately available is there a way to make decisions about how to uh, you know do bigger things mm -hmm. we have a thing called meeting time which we do on thursdays where people can decide if they want to come and then like make decisions and then we vote on it and then try to make a date and then after chicken no after meeting there's check-in time where mm. we would discuss the more important things that happen in meetings the people who weren't in meeting mm -hmm. and so sometimes we have stuff like market day or like days where like a bunch of kids you could call it like some sort of like an open day or something mm -hmm. um, and then we would get resources and then we would ask what kind of plans do we want to make and what kind of things do we want to do and what do we think would be interesting for other people and then it's yeah, it's kind of like a whole thing that we got like plan, and then we spread, and and then you can like invite your friends or family and stuff like that, and then it's kind of the whole thing, yeah. Mm. Right on. So we have collectives like that. Yeah. So if you want something that sort of takes budget or whatever, is is very much where you need to go to meeting. But we also have situations like we just had yesterday, where uh, one of the other members who isn't here didn't realize that there were people here who could help with animation. And he was mm. like, oh, I wish I could do animation, but there's no machines here that can do it and nobody can help me with it. And we're like, what? <laughs> I mean, he's relatively new. And, mm. you know, today he spent his uh, some of his morning in the lounge doing animation on a computer. And it was quite funny because uh, one of the teens, he was a little bit late, so one of the teens showed a seven-year-old how to use the software and he was playing with it. And then when this older 13-year-old arrived, the seven-year-old is the one who then taught the 13-year-old. So we also have uh -huh. sort of that going on. Yeah. Right on. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Berg. Hello and welcome to the Agentic Schools podcast. I am here with the members of Riverstone Village, who I'm going to have introduce themselves um, <laughs> because there's so many of you. Great. Um, I like to start off with uh, storytelling. So, tell me a story. Tell me stories about um, ways that that you all have taken advantage of what Riverstone Village has to offer. Okay. So I'm guessing we'll introduce one by one and tell a short something about how. Uh, you've taken advantage of Riverstone. Uh, does anybody want to start? Sorry, that's my phone just telling us that it's one of our alarms for the day. Um, okay, so... Um, my yeah. name is Rakea, and what one of the things that I like to do in my free time because I go to Riverstone is go to the art room and paint with watercolors of my designs mm -hmm. that I do. Mm-hmm. Right on. And I stick them on my wall at home as like a little token. Oh, neat. Great. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Anybody else like to go next? Hello, my name is Bonolo, um, and I like to spend time making origami and things and things made out of paper, and I draw, and I like to paint mm -hmm. a lot. So nice. that's what I do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh -huh. I don't have much to say. Okay. So. You don't have to answer everything. It's yeah. absolutely nope. voluntary. Like everything everything here at Riverstone is always voluntary and by consent. Right on. Okay. I think I Hang on a sec. Kate's still talking. Yeah. Hi, I'm Kate. My favorite thing is making like friends and meeting mm. tons of new people. Mm -hmm. Right on. Yeah, it's thing. Right. Uh, hello, my name is Hassan. And I think one of my favorite parts of Riverstone is the amount of free time you have. Because I have a lot of hobbies. Uh, right on. There's wood carving, embroidery, which I have my stuff here. 
I can't name them. I'm... Dissecting things? Yes, I'm trying to remember them. Dissecting things, there we go. Um, making skeletons. We built a pig skeleton once here. Yeah. Uh, Egg Island. Egg Island, yeah. I had enough time to develop a game. Oh, neat. Right now, it's a board game. I just want to just grab the thing. Yeah. Show it. Yeah, we can actually show you the board, yeah. It's upside down. Yeah, it's upside it, it is upside down. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But that's um, a kind of a almost like a sort of a D and D type game that works on a board. Yeah, D and D has yeah D and D has a lot more uh, freedom when it comes to making what you want, but mm -hmm. the game has certain mm -hmm. rules and uh, parts that you can play. Mm -hmm. It's called egg island. Very cool. Because mm, it's shaped like an egg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't Hello, my name is Angelo. Um, I think one of my favorite um, parts of Riverstone is having the opportunity to discover what I enjoy and what I would like like to do in future, even if it's not like for a long t uh, period, just for mm. more um, shorter times, like new hobbies, discover new things, discover new people, um, and just the whole bunch of knowledge that I wouldn't really get the opportunity to discover if I was in a more mainstream school because I'd be too busy with a different task trying to pass grades rather where now I can do the same thing but I have more um, leeway to discover other things as well. Mm -hmm. Nice. Nice. Cool. So, so how many of you have experience in other kinds of schools in addition to being at Riverstone? Or are you all just there all the time? <laughs> okay. Um, no, I've been here my whole life. I've been right on. kindergarten. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, we went to kindergarten one time, but that's all. Yeah. Right on. I mean, right on. Um, I have a faint memory. I used to go to the school with my brother and so on and so on. They would let me play around and I would find it cool, but I just had no friends and I was always alone and mm. no one wanted to hang out with me. So now when I'm here, I have you know tons of friends nice. hang out nice angelo um, you were there for a, a while yeah before i joined riverstone i was in a moment in the mainstream school until grade six mm. um and that was in 2019 i believe late 2019 yeah. is when i joined riverstone just before covid right on, um, right on. So i was uh, for most of my life um i've been in a mainstream school until recently right on how did you find it, Riverstone? Riverstone or mainstream? Riverstone. Well, the difference. Oh, the difference between. Um, it was very confusing. I wasn't used to it. I'm, I'm, I'll admittedly, I'm still kind of getting used to it, but I'm a lot better than I was when I first joined. Um, I, was, I was actually speaking to Jan about this on the car right here, that when I first joined Riverstone, I didn't know what to do because mm -hmm. I had all this time to like do other things and like there wasn't a structure um like a set structure like anything to do so i was kind of just lost and i would like do nothing for a while um i'd either be on my phone or i would um just talk with friends a lot of the time and that continued on for i think a year a year and a half mm -hmm. maybe later than two years until I kind of discovered, um, well, not discovered, but like I, I kind of wanted to do something. Mm -hmm. um, I joined up some friends on coding uh, that didn't last very long. I wasn't as interested as I thought of, uh, uh, I was. So after that, after I stopped coding uh, for another year, I think I kind of just helped around Riverstone doing other things like helping with conflicts um, uh, between people, other things like that until mm -hmm. I discovered my love for like working out. So I'm a really big fan of like the German things like that and, mm. and that's and psychology. So that's also more like recent things now. So that that's, I've started to like structure myself. I'm like more put, I'm more, I'm more put in place as of mm. recent, but compared to my first time or my first few times at Riverstone mm. before. Right on. So one of the things I notice about schools like yours is that while there's no academic structure, like your activities aren't put together for you, but there is ways that, that the community is structured. And 
usually around things like making decisions together and resolving conflicts when they come up. So can you explain, because most of the people might not know how those things work, um, how does it work at Riverstone Village? To when, when Say when a conflict happens, what do you do? Um, it depends what kind of level the conflict is, but most mm. of the time it's just an AC, which stands for... Access Committee. An yeah. S I can't know. Access Committee. <laughs> Access yeah. Committee. And so basically a staff member will give the two, it's usually just two people that are um, fighting or arguing or something. And then we'd have our turn to speak and then we'd try to work things out as much as possible so that we're both happy and mm -hmm. we make sure it doesn't happen again. Try to find a way that we can avoid it in the future. Mm -hmm. And so that's usually how we solve conflicts and stuff. Mm -hmm. right Although you've had a lot of experience with when it's a bit more complicated and you've done quite a lot of solving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a, a while ago. I don't remember everything, but... Because we don't honestly have a lot of conflicts. Yeah, most right of the time, the conflict is generally more petty things. It's mm. not anything that serious most of the time. But there was one time where there was four, I don't know, but there was like a, a group of people that were having conflict a lot. And uh, we... A lot of it would sometimes escalate to close to violence. Um, mm. it, it would get pretty bad. Uh, but most of the time it was screaming matches and things like that. Um, so what we, had, what we often did was we'd separate them. Um, so we had, um, we had separate places for them. One person would go down there, one person would go up there. And then we'd try talking it out, try seeing what the issue is, why this is going on and how we can solve it, like generally how we would do in a normal access committee. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, it was a more temporary solution, uh, more like a day-to-day -day solution, not like a, a long period of time because it just kept on like going on between these people. Mm. But after a while, I think one of the people left <laughs> Yeah, and then it kind of the, the conflict between each other started to like dissipate more. Mm. So there was less. So we didn't have to deal with it as much. But most of the time, we just try sorting it out as soon as possible. We don't leave it for later. We don't leave it for tomorrow. Mm. If a conflict happens, we go and we try sorting out the conflict as best as possible. Mm. Because if you try ignoring it or leaving it, then the tension is going to build up and then it's just going to cause more chaos for not just the people like more in the conflict, but the people around them as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's why we had to sort the conflicts out as, as soon as they appeared, as soon as we saw what was happening. Yeah. So mm -hmm. just briefly, one sort of difference between Riverstone and many other um, similar spaces is we have a much less formal process of conflict resolution. We don't, for example, go through a writing up process. We don't have a set time where these things are going to happen uh, because we mostly try and deal with things sort of on the spot. And, um, you know, at this point, for whatever reason, sorry, at this point, for whatever reason, it's just we don't seem to have a lot of conflicts. I think we mm -hmm. tend to solve them fairly simply as they're coming mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Yeah. In order to you know do creative projects or things that might require more resources than what's immediately available, is there a way to make decisions about how to uh, you know do bigger things? Mm -hmm. We have a thing called meeting time, which we do on Thursdays, where people can decide if they want to come and then like make decisions and then we vote on it and then try to make a date. And then after chicken, no, after meeting, there's check in time where mm. we would discuss the more important things that happened in meetings to the people who weren't in meeting. And so sometimes we have stuff like market day or like days where like a bunch of kids, you could call it like some sort of like an open day or something. Mm -hmm. And then we would get resources and then we would ask what kind of plans do we want to make and what kind of things do we want to do and what do we think would be interesting for other people. And then it's, yeah, it's kind of like a whole thing that we got like plan and then we spread and, and then you can like invite your friends or family and stuff like that and then it's kind of the whole thing yeah right on. so we have collectives like that yeah so if you want something 
that sort of takes budget or whatever is, is very much where you need to go to meeting. But we also have situations like we just had yesterday where uh, one of the other members who isn't here didn't realize that there were people here who could help with animation. And he was mm. like, oh, I wish I could do animation, but there's no machines here that can do it and nobody can help me with it. And we're like, what? <laughs> I mean, he's relatively new. And, mm. you know, today he spent his uh, some of his morning in the lounge doing animation on a computer. And it was quite funny because uh, one of the teens, he was a little bit late, so one of the teens showed a seven-year-old how to use the software and he was playing with it. And then when this older 13-year-old arrived, the seven-year-old is the one who then taught the 13-year-old. So we also have uh -huh. sort of <laughs> that going on. Yeah. Right on. Do you have like rules that you've all agreed on kind of thing? Do you have that kind of decision-making where you're setting boundaries and, and figuring things out together? Yeah. Yeah. That's the kind of thing we would also talk about in meeting. Mm -hmm. Like there's a really common rule, like stop. Like if someone mm. says stop to you, like you're doing something to someone and someone says stop, you have to stop. Mm. Yeah, so that's like an example of only some of the rules that we make. Rules. Huh? Only reasonable rules. Like, yeah, mostly only like, green. You have to line up outside whenever you're cold or something. Yeah, mm. more yeah, like mm. rules like to keep everyone happy and like yeah, stuff like that. Mm. Right on. One of the things that a lot of people are dealing with around the world are like you you obviously have some kind of computers available what's the relationship to screens like devices or computers or wh how is that handled like do we have any screen time limits or no. are you allowed to no. use your own stuff no, i wouldn't say we have a lot of screen time limits like if someone wants to sit there on their phone then sometimes they just don't want to communicate mm -hmm. um, but if you ask them do you want to come join us in something or if they want to offer someone, if they want to do something, then you can check out. But I think most people talk a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only limits we have on phones is that only the one rule where you can't take it into the bathroom. Mm -hmm. um, because there was often times where people would just sit on in the toilets or whatever, in the bathrooms, yeah. just on their phone. So just to stop like the hold up of people, that's the only one, the only rule we implemented with the restriction <laughs> of devices. Yeah. That's right the only on. one. Right on. There is one more, but I think it just doesn't come up. So people sort of forget about it, which is that you're completely responsible for whatever content other people are exposed to through lyrics uh, or uh, visuals that if you're going to be viewing or listening to something inappropriate, then you need to do so completely privately. But it just mm. doesn't seem to come up because I think people are generally pretty reasonable with what they're um, using mm. on their phones. Right, right. And yeah, it, I, I love saying to, to other staff, we often smile to each other. We stand there on the patio looking at all this activity on the lawn and up the tree and in the bush making clubhouses. And we say, we just love how these kids are using their unlimited screen time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right on. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're when you're dealing with kids who aren't familiar, like like you probably have friends who are not in a school like this. How do you describe it? How do you help them understand what your school is like? I have a lot of these friends. Uh, I would try to explain it like it's. Hmm. Like. How do you explain it, Kat? I explain, you know, it. explain it. I go like through like a step through step. Like, so we don't have any work that we have to do, but sometimes we want to do work, and then we ask to do work. They always look so baffled when and we say that. My favorite is <laughs> when actually, like recently, my friends were talking about exams, and one of them was like, mm. "My my exams are coming so late, only in um August," and I'm like, "Mine is happening on the twenty second of August, the thirty second of August." Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's non-existent. <laughs> and like, you don't have exams? And I'm like, no, no. And so I go like, it's a self-directed education. And so I like try to like simple it out as much as I can. But mm -hmm. some of them still ask questions like, so you don't have homework? Mm -hmm. Except sometimes you do have homework. Sometimes I ask for homework. Yeah, like recently yeah. I asked a staff member to give me some math mm -hmm. it was going around and so I took math home and then I didn't finish it now that I think about it hmm. <laughs> you finished yours okay I finished mine I had like three pages yeah, yeah. but my head was hurting and I was like no nah, I would rather mm -hmm. just listen to music 
right? <laughs> Think for me, it depends on who's the one asking. Hmm. If it's like a more elderly person, or um, I'll I'll be more like simple with it, not to make it like that far away from the more mainstream thing, simply because it's just going to be like a process to try fully explain it to them because they're more mm. like held off on that sort of thing. They don't really want to hear that kind of thing. And oftentimes it's a lot of work to try and explain to them. They're less understanding, but yep. if it's like a um, middle-aged person or like 25 or something, whatever, it's a bit easier because like they're more open-minded and mm. it's easy to explain to them. And with like my friends of like younger ages or whatever, it's, it's, I can just kind of say, yeah, I don't, I don't have exams exactly. Like, uh, well, I am do I'm writing a paper or I'm writing the NBT. Like now it's kind of type of exam. I'm writing that then, but I don't really have exams all the time. Every term, I don't have all this homework thing that I, I have to do, but I can do it. I'm, I'm like more willing to explain it to someone depending on what kind of person they are and most, a lot of the time, how old they are. Otherwise, yeah, it's just a whole different process with different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And those exams that you do are completely, you know, because you've decided to yeah. do them, nobody's yeah. making you do them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the way I describe it a lot of the time, like the fastest way is I go to an unschooling school and normally people, because they hear the school at the end, they're just like, oh, it's school. <laughs> So they don't really <laughs> like question you further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, in times where I say it's kind of like a daycare, but like different, because mm. technically, think about it: you play around and you kind of get watched over while your parents are working, so on, so on. So it's kind of like a daycare, but also you learn at the daycare. Mm -hmm. Most daycares, you just. Take care, baby. Exist. Yeah. There, not knowing how you got there. Also, exactly. we don't have a nap time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have a nap. Although you can. You can, you can. Yeah, you can. Take a nap. And some kids do. Yo, let's actually start a nap time. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm on that plan. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to start a nap time. One o'clock. Good for me. No, one o'clock is too Especially soon. Especially for winter, because we're in winter now, of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we should hibernate. I'm, I'm for it. I, I could use that. We should take us yeah. a meeting, y'all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. One of the things that, that's always interesting at schools that, that self-determine themselves is they often uh, create uh, jargon words or words that are um, unique to your community. Um, like your, your stop rule is something that, that you know, may seem obvious to some, but stop should mean stop. Um, but what are, are, are there any other ones that, that other people might not be familiar with, might not understand, like code words? Yeah. Um, so generally for check-in time, sometimes we would pronounce it chicken time. So anytime you want to say it's check-in time, instead you would just walk around going, Pukah, yeah, like Pukah. the alarm. Is just, Pukah, Pukah. <laughs> yeah, you kind of just turn into a chicken. Ah, very and then good. younger kids, they like to like, who's going to lay the first egg? And then they like play. Whoever eggs. gets to the area first lays the first egg. Yeah. yeah something funny. like that. Uh, and then you heard, you heard my phone going off a couple of times. That was for what? Oh, and then we have gongs. They are like, there's two gongs at the end of the day. I think that's probably sorry, continue. I forgot what Yeah, it's the first like, gong. First gong is like try to finish up what you're doing and then second gong is um, start packing your start stuff. packing your stuff. It's time to get ready to go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we actually have an old ship spell that people can oh, ring. Yeah. Shine. Yeah. Lock your stuff inside. An old right. cast bronze ship spell from I don't know how many hundred years ago. Yeah, we also have red the stickers. Thing here yeah, well, the red stickers, stickers aren't that much these days. No, yeah. kind of faded. Well, people have learned what what not to, to do and not. Like every time I, I see something interested, I'm like nothing here. So a red sticker yeah. means um, this needs to go through the access committee before you can oh. use it. So do you want to just quickly explain oh, the access committee? Uh, gen generally, you would explain to someone, okay. Do you know what to do, what not to do? Are you are you confident? Well, no. They'll ask everyone else. Do you think that that this person will is capable of doing this with something? So, like, getting certified. Actually, no. Would you consider yeah. certified? Yeah, getting certified for it. No. Yeah, getting yeah. certified for something. Like, Angelo here is certified for most things. Uh, I think yeah. 
Well, do you, you want to talk about being certified for sharp knives? Even inside that's one means for you. that you basically yeah, that, certified. Yeah. Right. It's not really certified for sharp knives. It's just certified for sharp objects in general. Mm-hmm. I had to because I had to use scalpels to um, dissect things. And mm-hmm. you, they'll ask you questions like, do you know not to cut towards you, that you should always cut away? Um, do you know to put a cap on it, to clean it afterwards? Uh, to dry it properly after you clean it so it doesn't rust? Things like that. Yeah, so that would mm-hmm. that would have a red sticker on traditionally, but yeah. yeah, as you say, we've kind of learned now what we need to be careful of. Yeah. Okay, so certification is is your process of dealing with things that may be hazardous or things like that. That yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's also how our access committee gives you access to things. Oh, I. Uh, that's, that's where it kind of also became our problem solving thing because ultimately we have once or twice in our history taken away access to the community um as in you know we you you right now you know can't really be trusted to be on your own in the community without supervision i don't know you guys might not remember this but do you remember there was somebody at yeah the, i do yeah wait sorry what we couldn't the, uh, the cupboard rule what oh there was not the cupboard rule okay the, the somebody who got a belt a, a, quite a young boy who had a habit of dropping his pants at people. Mm. <laughs> so he had to go under staff supervision for a day and then he got a belt that would help him with his impulse control. Um, mm. But then, you know, the being under staff supervision, you know, took away his access to people unsupervised. And then, you know, we handed him from staff to staff and we did yeah, stuff yeah, like I going and doing some good. weeding so we could chat, you know and give him mm-hmm, a chance to mm-hmm. chat and see where's this coming from and how can we solve it and you know we just generally have a problem solving approach mm-hmm, um, but mm-hmm. that's where the access committee ends up working for both you yeah know, giving access and saying okay access maybe needs to be adjusted yeah but again that's that's how it happened very rarely yeah we've used it that the way covered. The cupboard. We want to talk about the cupboard. Leave the cupboard in the closet. Leave yeah. the cupboard. Um, like some things that you have to be certified for are like being in the art room alone or using the sewing machine because we have like a sewing room and all that. Um, and me and Kate are like two of the only children who are certified for the sewing machine. And mm. no, we're not certified to supervise. No, no we are. In the sewing room. Although it's hands. more like they're there. For hands. Oh, for yeah. hand sewing, yeah. For hand sewing, we can supervise. Uh, but supervising lays on the staff member, Charlotte. Mm. So it's not that you can't do the thing if you're not certified. It's just that you need a supervisor until you're ready to do it on your own, and then you need to get certified. I see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's basically just for things that are expensive and can get broken, like the sewing machine. And or things can hurt you. Or that can hurt you badly, because we don't mind if you get a bit hurt. That's just learning. And that's we fine. give right. you a plaster. But we don't want any trips to the emergency ward. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I think we need to wrap up, because it's it's our home time. We've Wait, gone through actually, all our gongs. Very good. Time is it now? It's actually Do we have time for one more? Do we have time for another story? Can we do a last um, one? Uh, I think yeah. I can do a last one. Uh-huh. So, so I, tell me a story of a challenge that was faced and somehow the school was better or the person was better for having faced that challenge. Uh, give me a sec. Uh, <laughs> During Riverstone's history, this has happened. School was better or person was better. I'm curious what you were going to tell while the rest of us are thinking. Me? Yeah, because you yeah, started you have a saying, story. Why don't you just tell the story? Me, I'm going to tell you so a what's word. What's the challenge? Oh, I remember so I was going to say how you used like to um, pick up acorns right and throw them. Yes. And at the very first of your green COVID-19. side, there are acorns everywhere. And we had actually a bag of them. Mm-hmm. And then we would just take some out what's and the throw them um, at each other. That was fun. Yeah. And you had to, and, and you quickly learned that you had to take off the little sharp bits on the end. Yeah. And then we had to actually... Really That's actually a story that would help the, the school like and uh, the student. Hmm. The the you, had, you had to take off the sharp bit before you threw it at someone. Hmm. Which um, is why that bag had never had them on. Yeah. Did you manage to think of a challenge? We, All we, I could think of was COVID-19. COVID-19, <laughs> okay. That was wild. How did we get through that, guys? I remember, I remember, I remember we were like, we could play outside without our masks on as long as we were like proper but that, that, was, that was 2021 
Yeah, yeah during 2020. Year. You know what? I've, I've, I've remembered the challenge that we came through. It was like a triple challenge. Can I? Yeah. 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 All right. So do you remember when we got seriously burgled and they took all our stuff? Oh! Yeah. Remember that? History of and then we started putting together a fundraiser to try and get some money to replace some of our stuff. And right then my dad had a stroke. And mm. I had to fly down to a different city to go and uh, support him in the hospital because he'd been on holiday when he had the stroke. So I was suddenly pulled out of being able to support with this fundraiser or any of the crises that were going on. And I was really worried about like what was going to happen because I'd kind of been anchoring it. Uh, Angelo, you were one of the people involved at that point, I think. I was. Yeah, yeah you, you were. were. The yeah. Patreon. When you did the stream and everything. Wait, and, oh, the Patreon. Oh, well, the Patreon also. Yeah, that's, that's a more recent one. That's yes. recent. Oh, I so thought the, we were so talking about the Patreon. Let's go there as well. So, so anyway, yeah, it was mostly the older teens, and I think you were still a little young then. I don't remember what's All right, right. so this must have been um, Theo and Karen. Theo, Karen, and Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. Kyle. Anyway, the point is that the older teens at that point just did it. They just, mm. it's like, I just wasn't there, and they just made the thing happen. Mm. And they managed to raise a whole lot of money. And then we didn't have to buy very much because we also got given a whole lot of stuff. So that's how we ended up having our own Oculus VR thing because the kids had always wanted that. And we ended up having enough money for that. But then briefly, Angelo, um, we recently had a challenge this year because we've got this basic education laws amendment bill, which has been a real problem in South Africa. that We're kind of trying to deal with it. And it's scaring off a lot of uh, people from signing up. And we've also got this crashing economy in South Africa. So a lot of our parents have been very impacted financially. So uh, we were really running at a loss and we didn't know if we could stay in this venue. And mm. we put together a Patreon page. Yeah. 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 So that's yeah. so unsure. <laughs> 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 I'm trying to remember the specifics of like, I'm being told I was in a stream. So <laughs> yeah, like, no, we got this. Was the previous one. Yeah, I'm, I'm still like focusing yeah. on the previous one. I'm like, wait, yeah. what? The Patreon yeah. was really fun doing like the adverts and like painting on the um in the art room. Mm. With like yeah. when we got like when what how what would you call the people that gave, patrons patrons yes when we got patrons. We would like write down their names in the art room with paint and well, we would like write them videos, that. thank you videos. And it was mostly me, Kate, and another boy mm. who usually did it. Yeah. The mm. thank you videos and like the ads and stuff. Mm. And then there were other stuff. Yeah. So you can still support our Patreon actually because we're still running at a loss. Uh, we're very right. grateful to our patrons because they are definitely helping us keep going. So maybe we'll give you the link that you can put that in the, in the chat. And um, these amazing students will then write your name on the art room wall. And depending on what you donate, you might even get your own custom designed digital artwork or your own thank you video. Or, yeah. I thought about those. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any yeah. other, any other uh, online ways that people can find out more about Riverstone Village? Well, we have a website, uh, which is very, very easy because it's just our name. Uh, and then the thing to remember is that we're in South Africa. So it's riverstonevillage.org.za um, ah, because ZA good. is the extension for South Africa. So riverstonevillage.org.za. Um, uh, yeah. Instagram. And oh, I think we do have Instagram. Yeah, well. we Facebook. See, I don't do these things. Instagram, a Facebook. Um, we have a YouTube channel, but we're not posting yeah, as I know, much I'm just getting to day know. yet. Yeah. Um, and we're also trying to start on TikTok as well to like um, broad out a uh, broad range. Mm -hmm. um, but for now, our main things are Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon as our three most um, posted on things right now. Great. Great. All right. Well, I thank you very much. Thank you for, for taking a little extra time with me. Um, and uh, we'll uh, call it there. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone do the wiggle. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze the camera. <laughs> Perfect. This has been the Agentic Schools Vodcast. I would love to hear from you. Please share what resonates with you from this episode. What do you think? about schools that support children to exercise their agency on a daily basis. 
Agentic schools operate from within a new education paradigm. I wrote the Agentic Schools Manifesto to help you make sense of that new paradigm. The manifesto is available as a membership benefit when you join Deeper Learning Advocates for $5 per month or more. This vodcast is a co-production of Attituder Media and Deeper Learning Advocates. At Deeper Learning Advocates, we seek to embed the psychology of learning in policy so that policy stops undermining learning. The financial support of our audience is crucial to accomplishing that mission. You can find out more about the manifesto and join the cause at dladvocates.org. One final thing, I also offer a free course called Motivation Myth Busting for School Teachers. To sign up, visit holisticequity.org. Go to the Tools tab and click on Free Motivation Course. Thank you for your kind attention.